Okay, so let me plug this in. I wanted to, oops, I wanted to show the system working. So this is um, this is my uh, the first of the Sonosybe uh, systems. Uh, Sonosybe is short for Sono Cybernetic System. And so rather than using the word cyborg, which I have issues with, um, I'm going with the word sonocybe, which is, uh, you know, a sono cyberneticist. You could say a sonic cyborg if you're, you know, lazy, but, you know, it's the, it's uh, sound and cybernetics together. And so um, this allows me to um, play around in a realm where there isn't some preconceived notion of what it's supposed to be. So let me break it down for you real quick. Um, these are the exo hands. Um, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, complexity that's been kind of distilled down to uh, more simple ideas, such as um, each finger has um, two knuckle sensors, one analog, which are the lower row down here, and then uh, a row of switches, which are the higher row up here. So that way, I mean, I realized that the uh, that the hand, you know, all the all the power comes from that base knuckle anyway. And by doing it this way, when I lift my fingers up, like pushing them backwards, you can see that the that the top of the sensor decouples from the bottom of the sensor, ensuring that I have an off state. So there's a physical motion for creating an off state, you know, and it, you know, it's so far, it's been kind of hard to, um, to practice, but it is practicable. So, uh, it is very, very doable. And I can say that my, that my wrists in general and my fingers after an initial period of, um, of pain, because all of these knuckles, the, 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 the base knuckles, I mean, the upper knuckles here, they're all scarred up and these are getting their scars and any musician knows that that's kind of the name of the game is to get your calluses, get your, um, get your scar tissue in there. That's going to, um, you know, that's kind of the first step towards, uh, you know, your, your hands or lips or whatever, uh, generating memory. And so now, um, at this stage in the game, the right hand, I've only been using it for about two weeks, whereas this one I've been using for close to two months. There is no pain when I use this one, whereas with this one, it's it's in pain right now. You know, it's like I can, you know, it feels more like pinching right now. And so they've already done, the, they, they haven't scabbed up yet like these did, but they're getting there. So they're toughening up. And so um, there are... These are pressure sensors. These are analog. And so once they touch, they send a signal. But then once, you know, you know, pressure is applied, let's see, like this one. see, once the pressure is applied, you know, you're getting a pressure signal. Whereas with these, these, this, this upper row here, those are switches. Uh, they're still built the same way, but the, uh, there's a disc. Um, there's two discs in here that are that are um, that are touching, and the thickness of the disc that the pin and the cathode are connected to determine the amount of resistance that uh, between uh, you know determine the amount of resistance in the system, which means that when it when it finally touches, does it turn to um, does it go up to half? of the full range? Does it barely go up at all? Does it go straight to um, the top of the range? The thickness of that of the of that half of the sensor determines that. And then the other one is just there to kind of dissipate the um, the anode current across the whole surface. And um, if you look up my arms, you can see that I now have two functioning um, two functioning computers. One is for audio. This one, um, 
deals with all the audio stuff because the sound card is there and it sounds great. And and there is a a um, an FM transmitter, uh, but I'm not using that fully yet. I'm just trying to get the system working properly now. And on this arm, there is a touch screen that uh, is also running pure data. I mean, the, uh, the, this is a Raspberry Pi also running pure data. So both of these are running pure data, running Linux on the Raspberry Pi 3s, uh, the ones that have Wi-Fi built in, which ironically I'm not using anymore. I find it much more stable to use a network cable. So you can see here, that network cable goes there and you know all the way across and down into this one. So they're networked together. The benefit of this is that uh, each hand is going into the hardware serial input uh, that's on the Raspberry Pi board. So here is where that is on this arm and just behind the screen is because um, this the 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 um, the touch screen is taking up is, is sitting on top of the pins so uh, but they did um, copy those pins and put them there so that serial is there I have this little piece glued down so it isn't like pulling loose every time I move my arms and it's much more stable and much faster than uh, the Wi-Fi solution which was not going to be scalable at all um, because, I mean, once, you know, you got 50 or 60 people all broadcasting on the same Wi-Fi channel, that takes a different idea of what Wi-Fi is than just hoping that you don't interfere. So I figure if everybody's, um, if everybody is, has their own network system that's hard, uh, hard network, and then um, we use Wi-Fi and FM and things like that as a networking medium and we can start playing with meshes, then it can evolve into, um, you know, then we can reinvestigate Wi-Fi, but not as the main system for con for getting the sensor information to the computer. I think hardware does that better. Uh, up on the upper arm uh, is where I place the battery, and at the elbow there is a joint. What's interesting is that these bands that you see there, those bands make the... Uh, uh, negate the need for a very complex harnessing system. I just hang it on my arms. It's not going anywhere. You know, it's stable, right? Now, the way these work is that um, the accelerometer creates a thing I call a, a motion pulse. It's very easy to um, to get. All you do is take the z-axis of the accelerometer. You subtract it from itself and then multiply the result into whatever range you want. For me, I um, have it going at a range up to 255. So basically, when you're not moving, the signal is zero. And when you are moving, moving the signal is not zero. And not zero shows up, can be used as a kind of velocity message. And because it's so fast, I was able to kind of get rid of, um, I was able, I mean, I'm still going to incorporate the mouthpiece again. I have a new design for that, but um, this is where the sound becomes, it gets generated. Now, I'm using this upper row of knuckles for effects. So, for instance, now if I hold this finger, delay rate and amount uh, attached to the X and Y axis with the Z being the trigger. Very simple and it doesn't need any complex um, algorithm to interpret it. You become the complex algorithm. And let's say I find a, a, a rate that I, say I can have it where it's
So, one of the things I like to do to sculpt is I use this other finger for introducing filters. See, without filter. And then with filter. Right? And then I'm also introducing other things like like bit crushing if it'll come on. And other things. So um, I'm gonna play it. One of the things I found interesting is that if I find an oscillation, let's see, I'm gonna use that with the filter. It's very easy to hold that oscillation. I don't have to think about it. And I can do other stuff with the other hand.
Thank <laughs> you.